can you can you hear my fridge? Sorry about that. I'm gonna read a couple lines from this poem. Dried maple and ash bark, lush emerald flats. The fall colored arena hark, the wide superior mass. What's up, everyone? Sorry, I'm getting my camera set up here really quickly. There we go. Okay. What's up, everybody? Happy Wednesday. Uh, just to start first things first, I'm sick. That's why I didn't stream Monday. Uh, if I'm coughing a lot or sneezing <coughs> or whatever, I think I have that RSV shit that's going around it's not that big of a deal it's just it's really hard to stream when you're coughing and hacking stuff up like no one wants to see that uh but i wanted to start the stream off with this i don't really do this i know that it's in the chat but for some of you that have been asking this is what we do every single day uh on the stock market open which is 9 30 eastern it is also posted on patreon so we do it live and then it's posted right after but every single day we do a daily analysis just covering the day-to-day -day, looking at what's changed looking for trade setups uh you know looking at different alts you guys can ask for different charts for me to look at if they're not already on my radar looking at the dxy looking for confluence or just going over educational content <coughs> So if that, something like that interests you or maybe you're a trader and you just like to use me for Confluence, uh, there is a Patreon link somewhere uh, below in the description. Sorry, I've got sick brain. I think it's also in the comments. But with that said, let's get down to it. So I'm going to open off the stream a little different today. Uh, I know a lot of you are, or maybe not a lot of you. I hate to say a lot of you because I don't want to throw everybody into a general uh, space, but I know some of you are panicking. You might have bought near the top, or at least the local top. You might be concerned. You know, you're looking at the macro saying, oh, everything's changed. Everything's going to shit. Well, there's two things. One, 
there is good and bad news every single day. I was talking to someone earlier and they said, I wonder if because the macro has changed, everything has changed. So I want you guys to zoom out and tell me what's changed. We are still in an uptrend. We went up 100% in our correcting. We're holding support. I don't, you know, I know some of you are, your portfolios are suffering and I, I feel bad for you. I do, but I was very public about buying in this area. Uh, yes, I've mentioned some alts. Uh, honestly, it's like 50-50 on alts. Some of the alts are doing well. Some of them are doing shit. You know, I'm sorry. I was trying to provide an outlet to some of you who haven't bought some of these alts that haven't moved. Uh, some of the ones that have been doing very well are like Crow, Gala, Doge. Uh, some of the ones that are doing bad that I called out. Uh, I believe File. File was doing good, but now it's below. And CRV. Uh, I know the CRV call. I know a lot of you guys are in on it. You know, that sucks, right? You can't nail them all. Uh, but the biggest thing that I've hyped about is dollar cost averaging. So use this as a learning lesson. You should be dollar cost averaging. You should not be sending, like if you have $100, you should not be sending $100 no matter what price is. Even if it's all the way down here, you should not be throwing $100 at any single price. If you have $100, a DCA is saying, I'm going to buy $2 every week for a year or $4 every a week for half a year, whatever it is. That way you're buying over time and regardless of whether we're <coughs> regardless of whether we're here or here, now your average is here. And you're looking at less of a loss, you're protected over time, you get to take the advantage of possibly buying lower. It safeguards your money. Uh, do your research. I do teach about it in my trading class and uh, I talk about it all the time in the private analysis. Uh, for those of you that ended up buying higher and you're down, I'll be real with you, I would just hold. You're already down significantly, unless everything goes to zero, which I again, I doubt, you might as well just hold. Bury your, you know, t get, take your stuff off, put it in a ledger and just bury it. Don't look at it. Uh, for most of you that listen to my call outs, you're probably not worried at all, right? We dollar cost average the low. Uh, again, for those of you that are doubtful or saying, hey, what, you know, how did you do that? Well, you buy red, right? You buy when the market's fearful. You buy when everyone thinks that everything's going to shit. You buy when the market is bloody and down a lot. You do not buy. And I know, again, some of you did DCA. And I know I'm the one that said, hey, this looks decent. Maybe it did well. Maybe it didn't, regardless. But you have to hesitate to buy when the market does this, when you see all this green with not a very large correction, even from the most local kind of low at 38 all the way to 74. You have to look at um, you have to look at what the market's doing and kind of do the opposite. If the market's going up, you don't buy. You actually look to sell. Maybe some alts you could could have gotten into that haven't moved. <coughs> but use it as a life lesson, right? There are going to be a significant amount of opportunities for you to buy bear markets, whether it be crypto, whether it be equities, whether it be housing, no matter what it is, whether it even be gold, right? Everything goes through cycles. There is a natural asset cycle in every single asset class everywhere, right? Some would say, you know, the housing market's really high right now, right? So if housing's very high now, I have my own views on housing. I think housing is going to continue rising. There's a 6 million uh, deficit in houses. There's a 6 million demand in houses, so houses are going to continue to rise, but <coughs> you don't buy a house when it's rising. You buy a house when it's falling, right? So you'd actually look to sell your house here and buy it down here. Now, a lot of that has to do with your own situation, where you're at, you know, if you have a family or not. So housing might not be the best example, but just wanted to cover some of that. Let's read some of these comments. So Fried fish, anytime, man. I'm more than happy to help you guys out. So Miguel, I think Castillo's trolling a little bit. Um, I know everybody's, even myself, like I'm a little worried, but let's be real. Um, we're up significantly on the DCA. I'm up like a thousand percent on my DCA still. I'm not terribly worried. I mean, it sucks to if we did top here to give up some of those profits, but I'm not terribly worried. Even if we went back to like 40K, I still am not terribly upset or worried. I don't think we're going to get there um, at all anytime soon.
I unfortunately bought alts after a 17% drop. Thought I was doing good buying back and after taking profits, then it dropped another 40%. Yeah, but again, like that's where you DCA and you would have capitalized on all of that drop. <coughs> again, it's not a perfect system, but a lot of these alts were up significantly. Uh, even Tau, I know I actually added more Tau at 490 and 550, but. 90% of my position, 95% of my position is between here. So it would take a hell of a drop for me to become negative on that position. Just as an example. Check out the two and three week showing bearish, something to be aware of. I don't look at the two and three week. I don't care. I don't care above the weekly. This market's not old enough to look at above the weekly. Okay, so let's start with SPX. So... Everybody's worried. Everybody's freaking out. Everyone's saying war. Everyone's, you know, complaining and, excuse me, that's a month. Everyone is panicking. And here's the biggest kicker. I want you guys to look at from here to here. And what do you see? It's very easy. What do you see? It is a straight green line. We literally did this, right? Now we're down. What is it, like almost 5%? 5%. After climbing almost 30%, we had a record-breaking move on the S&P 500. We broke all-time highs. We have been overbought for several different weeks. We, sorry, my brain's losing focus, the sickness. And we have not had a pullback in over six months. This was bound to happen. Like, I, I hate when people start losing their minds because there's a couple of red candles on the chart, right? I would, I would argue that this trend is very, very strong, and this is the pullback we needed to continue higher. We had something very similar here, and if you look at RSI, we were overbought, 80 points overbought. Look at the last time. No, I know that was COVID, so I can't really compare there. 80 points overbought. We've dropped all the way back down to 58. The last time we were at 58, we were sitting at 4,500. Now we're at 5,000. I think for a lot of you, you need to look at these higher time frame charts and really put things into perspective because nothing ever goes up in a straight line. Uh, let me try and move the mic back just a tad. Maybe that'll help. Less sensitive, the sound quality is great, but yeah, yeah sorry, I had a, uh, let me try and fix this real quick. Yeah, my apologies, we've had uh, mic issues because my basement flooded and I've had to reset everything. Okay. Try this. Okay, let's see if that is a little bit better. If not, I can try this. Hopefully that is slightly better. Just let me know if it's if it's better or not. I'll try and fix it again. <coughs> you should look into yeah, yeah, I've heard the IV stuff's pretty good. All right, let's keep rolling. I'm guessing it's, is it better, worse? What's the deal? Oh, that would be why, because my, much better, okay. My bags are like the cars in Dubai right now. I'm sorry to hear that, man. I also have a circle at 50. What, what are you talking about? How's the doggos? They're, I think they're good. Oh, they're both sleeping. I just took them for a walk, so they're both hot and laying on the ground. Turn the mic back up. I can't hear. Dude, okay, so half of you say it's good. Hold on.
Oh, turn your vault. You meant him. Hold up. All right, I'm going to I'm going to assume that that's okay. <coughs> and excuse me for those of you joining. I'm sick. Uh, I'm trying not to uh cough in the microphone. Uh, the good thing is I'm on the tail end of it on a Sunday. I was really sick on Monday. Was really sick. Yesterday was getting better and today I feel a lot better. Mike is fine. Okay. Put it at 50. It is at 50. All right. A after the stream, I'll review the audio. Sorry. I thought it was still fine from, from earlier. Okay. So with all things in perspective, it's just a correction. We needed to correct, right? We were overbought, overextended. My TV isn't 45 and it's quiet. <coughs> Turn up the YouTube volume. What's up, Crypto M? How's it going? I'm pretty sure it's Crypto Mike, and I don't know why it's like blocking everything out, but. No panic sellers here. We are fucking trolling about the mic and sound volume. <laughs> All right, whatever. I'm just going to continue. So the DXY, one thing I do really like to see is this rejection from 107. I've told people in the private analysis that ultimately 107 and 100 are our levels to watch for. Uh, all of this has been ranging. Uh, and I know there's that nasty diagonal that's like this that everyone thinks we broke out of. I'll be fair and honest. I don't think that diagonal means anything. Um, I, I could be wrong. You know, I don't want to be the guy that that tells you otherwise, but... Diagonals are very, very hard to trust. You have to trust horizontal support and resistance breaks. Whatever it was at the beginning of the stream is good. Now it's down one to two levels. Oh, I'm sorry. But the good thing is we're rejecting. I would like to see this lose this kind of 104 level. If we can do that, should start to see the rest of the market rally. Now, the DXY was rising while, guess, SPX and Bitcoin were going down. We started that rise, a uh, little, really, little bit of delay, but started that rise here. I would expect this to drop through 104. Maybe Bitcoin does this and then starts to rise. Let's open up the SPX. So same deal. Both S&P and Bitcoin were slightly delayed when they started to correct based on this going higher i almost wonder if <coughs> i almost wonder if this will lose 104 before the markets begin to recover before we start to see bitcoin starting to break into like 65 or 66k you guys have to remember i'm still macro bullish i don't see a reason not to be i know there's the overshadowing of all the bearish news recently but there's still plenty of bullish news and just to remind you here we have all of these bullish narratives going on the largest wealth transfer of all time rich people have the most money of all time there's still a ton of sideline capital we have markets that are easier to access earnings are remaining flat for most companies or growing nvidia is going absolutely bonkers too with ai the market i wouldn't say six anymore probably closer to three to four so we will change that and we have two proxy wars now which are still very bullish so I know the Israel and Iran thing, you know, a lot of you guys are panicking. But when Russia invaded the Ukraine, the market pumped 40%, or at least Bitcoin pumped 40% right after. The uh, invasion was February 24th, 2022. Uh, the only reason I know that, by the way, is because I looked it up uh, two days ago, and I've had to recite it like 100 times. Uh, but right after that happened, we ended up bottoming and moving up 40% before ultimately continuing the bear market. And why do we bought him? Because everybody expected it. Ugh, water is amazing. And just to even show you, here's the week of the invasion, right, from bottom to top. And the, by the way, the bottom was the day that they invaded. We moved up 43%. Now, you could argue, yes, we moved down there for after, but we were ultimately in a macro bear market. So you have to remember, there are these minor moves right like the news move that everyone expects to go down but then we short squeeze upwards 
but the macro was pointing downwards. At this point, the macro is pointing upwards. This is again a minor move downwards to likely continue that macro move. And now that we're on Bitcoin, I'm going to go back to total just really quickly. Only looking at total one for now, just because we're not in alt season. And again, I know a lot of you guys have a lot of questions on alts. My easiest answer to give you is alts are not going to do anything or likely not outperform how they have performed now until that liquidity shift happens. Now they might come back to highs. They might break hot their, you know, their local highs that they're at. I know a lot of them will recover from the drop that they've uh, currently experience, but you're not going to see that crazy altcoin market until that liquidity shift happens, and it'll be very obvious from Bitcoin dominance. So totals attempting to hold support here, just more confluence, more more good stuff happening. Tether dominance. I had someone today that told me that this was climbing back into support. Guys, this is retesting as resistance again on the weekly. You are now forming uh, bearish divergences here between these two points, which is good for Bitcoin. You ultimately do not have bullish divergences on the outer end. On top of that, this pump is being supported by low volume. So there are three indications of bearishness or bearish continuation on this chart. <coughs> and the more bearish this is, the more bullish crypto is overall. You have to remember again, we dropped significantly. We dropped 55%. We are the most oversold we've ever been. Of course, we are going to have a bounce at some point. If this is a 15-minute chart, where do you think this goes? In my opinion, it does something like this and continues lower. And with Bitcoin. So the weekly is the first thing I want to touch on. First of all, we've dropped from 89 all the way down to 63, a huge correction in RSI, and not so much of a huge correction from price. We're down 17%. And again, we went up 94%. Again, guys, you need to look at higher time frames and put things in perspective. We were up 94%. We have corrected 17%. I don't in any way see how this is bearish. Looking at 2020, just to give you more <coughs> insights, when we went to break all-time highs, we climbed 110%. In one week, we dropped 21% from those highs before breaking all-time highs, going all the way to 40, dropping another 30%, rising another 105%, and again in one week, dropping 30%. Now here is where you're getting that distribution. You have that head and shoulders, you have an ascending wedge here on the daily. You also have all these issues with RSI and MACD giving you bearish divergences as price is putting in new highs. So again, in my opinion, this here, this here, this started showing you, okay, it's time to take profits. We're seeing exhaustion. It's time to get out of this market. But it really wasn't until 40K where we started seeing those divergences. So from 40 to 65, we got another 50% move upwards. Right, you could have even sold at the peak here at $58,000, and you would have been fine. You would have basically sold the top of that run. If you look at the current run, we have none of that. We have no book bearish divergences. We have no issues. I wouldn't even say we have issues with volume on this drop. It's going to be a little bit more obvious on the daily, but we have volume going down as price is going down. And this is supposedly... One of the worst events ever for Bitcoin and everyone's paying attention and everyone's bearish and everyone's freaking out. Well, we hardly have any volume. Ever since we topped, volume has been rolling down, right? We've been moving sideways, even if we dipped into the 50s. Okay, so what? Like, it's just a correction, in my opinion. <coughs> Excuse me. But on that, let's look at the daily, and I'm going to remove a bunch of this stuff. So a couple big things here. One, we attempted to break support with very, very low volume. Volume's been, I'd say the average is somewhere around here-ish. If I could draw a straight line, here-ish, right? We're pretty average, right? That's not a valid breakdown. Again, in my opinion, we are forming or starting to form these bullish divergences with RSI. The first time we visited this kind of 59 to 60K area, we were here. The second-ish time, 
RSI is lower, and now the third time, RSI is even lower. Again, I could be completely wrong here, but to me, it seems like we're just correcting. Weekly is corrected. Daily is corrected. Now we just need something on hour four to hour one to really start or spark that kind of bonfire reversal. And here you go on hour four. We have lower lows with higher lows in RSI. And everybody is losing their mind being bearish, selling potentially what is the bottom. I know your alts dropped a lot, but here's the deal. If you're already down a ridiculous amount, look at Bitcoin anyways. Because if Bitcoin bounces, all of these alts are going to bounce anyways. We're not in alt season. 70k deviation back to the range lows at 13k or 12k. That'd be absolutely crazy. Doubtful. I'd say there's a 0.1% chance that happens. I don't see how Bitcoin goes below 50K with how much BlackRock has bought. But, you know, I'm open to being wrong. And even on the one hour, you can see it. Bullish divergence is forming all over the place. Lower volume as we're dropping. I bet there's lower volume on the four hour. I mean, it's just right in front of your face. Right? It's all right there. And people are choosing to be bearish at the lows, at support. You know, the biggest thing that you guys can do whenever you're trading, you know, okay, let's say you're, let's say we do this, right? The best thing you can do is look for longs here and look for shorts here. I mean, certainly you could add to long positions if we break those, but you should never be shorting support and longing resistance. Either wait for the breakdown or the breakout or look the other way and look for that trade because Risk reward favors an upward move here, just like risk reward favored a downward move here. I, again, regardless of what price is doing, you have to think about risk reward and, and what makes sense because ultimately you're not going to be right all the time trading. You have to think, how can I build over time? How can I be you know, more profitable over time? Because you're probably going to have like a 50-50 hit rate. The idea that you have an 85% win rate is complete bullshit. The best traders on earth barely win 50% of the time. All right, guys, uh, I'm going to look at Ethereum to Bitcoin and then call it again. I apologize. I'm sick. I'm running out of energy. I am feeling a lot better, and hopefully Friday uh, I'll stream and be 100% healthy. I haven't been able to even train this week. That's how bad it's been. But anyways, Ethereum to Bitcoin. My issue, oh, and I'll look at Bitcoin dominance as well. Actually, real quick, we'll do Bitcoin dominance. So I have this idea, and again, this is supported by <coughs> divergences with RSI. We have bearish divergences as price is moving higher. I believe, and maybe we just come back down and then we rip up, but if you guys have been in crypto for a while, you guys know that the summer is like kind of mini alt season. I wouldn't say it's like full blown alt season, but alts do very, very well in the summer. I don't know why. That trend is like that, but if we can get something like that, your alts will do fantastic here. So you could be buying the bottom of altcoins currently. Again, do it in a risk savvy manner. Learn what a DCA is. Don't go mortgage your house and buy a bunch of altcoins. That's the dumbest thing you can do. But buying bits and pieces over time, not a bad idea. That's what we did as soon as Bitcoin hit 17,500 and we ended up in a pretty good place. What's up, yes sir? Uh, I'm doing okay. I'm sick. So I'm actually ending the stream here as soon as I finish uh, Ethereum to Bitcoin, but uh, definitely take a chance and go back in that stream. So here's another indication. You have Ethereum to Bitcoin with bullish divergences. Yes, we technically have a breakdown, but if we can reclaim this in Bitcoin dominance, and I'll just pull up, pull up the side by side here. If Bitcoin dominance can ultimately drop, and Ethereum to Bitcoin. Okay, I don't know why. I'm just going to put a line here. You guys get it. You guys know that there's normally a box here. But if Ethereum can rise and this can break below this blue line, you're looking at potentially a mini alt season. Also, alts just corrected a ridiculous amount. And a lot of them needed to. I mean, you look at something like Tau. This thing needed to correct this hard. Doge needed to correct this hard. And if, if again, if... We get that many alt season this summer should be a lot of fun. <coughs> All right, guys, I'm gonna end it there. 
Again, uh, thanks to CoinCatch for sponsoring the stream. You get 15% off fees for life if you decide to use them uh, with my referral code. I love them. They're easy to use. I can always contact their support. If you guys have any issues, you can DM me.